out of the four World Championship Tournament games released for the Game Boy Advance, only one of these broke free from the strictly business, dual simulator style of gameplay seen in all the rest. But could Seven Trials to Glory be a dual simulator while giving you the freedom of a game like Sacred Cards or Reshuffle of Destruction without cracking under the pressure? So we're going to start off slow, and I really hate to be a snitch, but who named Giant Orc Giant Oak? I mean, and Amazon is Swordswoman is Amazon is Sword. I mean, that's not so bad. And they also spell duelists as duelists, which is a little strange. And there's a ton of examples like Penguin Soldier, which asks you if you want to return a creature to your hand, even though you can return your opponent's monsters as well. But maybe I'm just nitpicking, so we'll move on. And we're going to start in some familiar territory. If you've seen my GX Duel Academy glitch video, then you know that Smashing Ground has some interesting effects whenever your opponent's monster with the highest defense is zero, basically only hitting your monsters regardless of position. A sad casualty to a solid staple. And as it turns out, it actually didn't work in this game either. In fact, it's a little bit more prevalent because people like Joey have Spear Dragon, Goblin Attack Force, and Giant Oak. However, there is one cool thing about the glitch in this game. If you activate Smashing Ground in these conditions and it hits one of your monsters, then it will actually place a glitch card in your opponent's graveyard. And by using spells that can special summon from your opponent's grave, you can actually summon this glitch card on your side of the field. And while it doesn't really do anything, it's just sort of fun to mess around with. But not all card changes were bad. Magic Jammer got a small buff by not only being able to negate the activation of spell cards, but the activation of their effects. And this helps you in more ways than one. The AI was designed to always use Magic Jammer on the very next spell you play. And in certain situations, they will use two Magic Jammers to deal with your Axe of Despair or Malevolent Nuzzler because it has a secondary effect that activates in the graveyard, essentially four for one themselves. A card that got a huge buff is Wild Nature's release. And instead of selecting one monster you control, it instead affects all monsters you control, making this into a limiter removal type pump spell for aggressive beast decks, which makes the archetype a lot better, seeing as things like Enraged Battleox and King Tiger Wang Hu were pretty solid in this meta. But it does not stop there. This actually affects your opponent's monsters as well, which is sometimes bad, but can also help you get rid of big beast monsters your opponent controls or clear the whole board in combination with DNA surgery. Now, Ring of Magnetism has pretty much nothing going for it, but is actually pretty busted in this game. This card reduces the attack and defense of the equipped monster, but your opponent can't select another one of your monsters for an attack. This isn't particularly good effect, especially in this era, but in this game, whenever your opponent attacks the equipped monster, the attack is instantly negated. So in essence, you can leave any monster with a ring of magnetism, and your opponent will try and fail every battle phase to attack the monster, giving you a permanent stall spell that only affects your opponents. On top of this effect, the computer is very bad at dealing with this sort of interaction. They pretty much see a weak monster and will be very aggressive, giving you a window to counterattack and deal damage. Not only this, but they will also see the monster as a non-threat and use Snatch Steel and Change of Heart effects on a higher attack monster you control, making this better than most stall spells. This card is only a common and in some of the earliest sets, so it can provide quite some utility throughout the playthrough. Okay, so we've gotten through the simple stuff, and I think you're ready for some jank. 
This glitch is an interesting interaction between some all-time classics, Graceful Charity and Exodia himself. Turns out, if you use Graceful Charity in order to draw all the pieces of Exodia, but then discard a piece or even two to its effect, then the full Exodia animation will play out, which is one of the best by the way. However, the duel will actually end in a draw. Seeing that the animation is 30 seconds long, it's a little anticlimactic, but funny nonetheless. Okay, let's talk about the win score. If you've played this game, you might have noticed that your win score seems to jump up to a really high number randomly during your playthrough, typically over 3000. This is actually due to a glitch with viewing trophies in the cabinet, and will only occur with two trophies specifically, the weekend and the Sugoroku trophy, and will occur the very moment you view either one of their full screen sprites. It will give you exactly 3584 wins. You can view the cabinet with no problems, but by viewing the sprite specifically of either one of those two trophies will cause the game to write an E right here, instantly giving you the equivalent of 3584 wins. And even if you had enough wins to already have a value there, it won't add on to it but instead overwrite it, meaning that it won't always increase by 3,584 if your wins are so high that you would have at least a 1 in this column. So the simple solution to this problem is obviously only viewing the trophy cabinet and not the trophies themselves, but there's also another solution to this problem, and that is changing the language to anything except for English. This glitch only occurs on English possibly because an oversight of trying to get all the trophy names to display in any language available. It's hard to say exactly why this happens, but I suspect it has something to do with the specific letters used in the title of the trophy names, or the fact that their words are a little off compared to the others. I don't know, let me know your theories in the comments. Now, this glitch has been known about for quite some time. In 2008, a user by the name of Keyblader1985 created a forum post on GameFAQs titled The Biggest Video Game Glitch Ever, where he explains this insane glitch involving the card shop and buying much more than what you've paid for. You see, the card shop only allows you to add things to the cart that will fit inside your budget. If you try to go over, Grandpa will stop you and tell you you don't have enough DP. This game has a small interface that informs you how much each pack costs, how many cards per pack, and how many packs they have in stock. In order to perform this glitch, you need a pack with a higher number of packs in stock right above a pack with a fewer number of packs in stock. In this example, on the first day of the game, we are going to use Volume 4 and the Spellcaster pack. First, we add the most amount of packs we can for the top pack and confirm it with A. Now the window on this is pretty big and you can actually make it bigger by changing the animation speed to something slower. But the trick is to press down and then very quickly afterward press A. Now the packs added should appear as zero, but press B again and the number of packs should be overwritten to how many packs you added for the top pack. By pressing A once again, you can actually keep increasing the amount of packs because you have now underflowed that value and can add as many as possible before you reach your bank maximum. Now that you have quite a few packs loaded, you can use it to get that amount of packs for the other ones available by using the same glitch. Now you may think this is pretty straightforward and you'll just have all the cards added to your collection, 
But this is far from the case, my friend. As soon as you exchange, the screen will freeze for quite a long time, and sometimes it will just freeze forever. In fact, there is such a range of variability on the outcomes of this glitch that I can't even list them all. Some will move you to a glitch screen, some will just go black, some will turn blue, some will show some packs with a bunch of volume 1 sprites, or it might even behave normally. In most cases, after you get past the exchange screen, you can reset the console and reload your file to see whatever you come up with. Most of these will result in a change to your internal settings to another language and the slowest animation speed, and you'll possess around 50% of all the cards in the game. Some of these combinations will also give you one or two trophies inside of the cabinet, and maybe unlock the Shadow World area, give you the purple intro screen, and some can warp you in the middle of tournaments. This is pretty fun to play around with, but do keep in mind that executing this more than once on the same file doesn't cause it to combine, but will instead overwrite. Also, there may be some consistent aspects about this glitch, but even with the same number of packs on the same day, won't always give you the same results, so keep that in mind. And so yeah, this game has a little bit of everything, and sometimes mistakes can help add to a game's identity and give it a little flavor, which is why this game will always stand out as different from the rest in both a blessed and cursed way. And if you want to see more glitches for this game, please leave me a like and sub for part two. Stay clean, scrubs.